when I get negative feedback from that, I, I don't take it nearly as personally if I feel like I was asked by God to do something. That makes it easier for me to give those things to Him. Everybody, Don Brian here, and welcome to Don Talks, where we talk about people's troubles, trials, tribulations, and hopefully triumphs in life. Today, my guest is Lee Shelton. He's all the way from the foreign country of Texas, and uh, Lee's a great friend. He's been a great encourager uh, throughout the couple of years I've known him. So, Lee, it's great to have you here with us today on Doc Talks. I'm excited to be here, Doc Brian. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, so Lee is the CEO of Compel Media, a uh, company there in Texas. Lee, give us a little information about you, your calling, and what you're working with at Compel. Yeah, so at eight years old, I uh, I, I walked a, an aisle, gave my life to Jesus at a at a Baptist church in Spartanburg, South Carolina, and um, and from there, really felt like I had a call. Like the Holy Spirit spoke to me that I had a call in the ministry. And at eight years old, I didn't know exactly what that meant. Am I going to be a missionary in a foreign country or a or a pastor? And those were kind of the binary options in my little eight year old brain. And multiple times growing up, knew that I needed to be obedient to the calling that I'd been given. But uh, started developing interest in media and marketing and just said, man, if I wasn't called into ministry, I'd be doing that. And uh, and God figured out a way of weaving those things together. And so it, with the dawn of the internet and digital, we, we really have just said, man, there are so many opportunities to reach what I think is the largest gathering of people in the history of the world, uh, which is the internet, uh, which means it's the largest mission field. And if there's a mission field, then I believe God sends missionaries. And uh, and so our team, we see ourselves as digital missionaries. Um, we we do we make content that um, both seeks to uh, shine light in dark places, seeks to communicate the gospel in bold ways, and seeks to uh, challenge and empower Christians to live the life that God's called them to live. Yeah, and that's that's great. It's definitely needed. Uh, of course, today we're in LifeWord Studios, which is the uh, media broadcast ministry of the VMA of America, and um, they produce content in a hundred, a little over 150 languages to 123 countries, to a listening uh, audience of near two billion people. Uh, and when you look at that, I mean, that's that's mind-boggling. That that one little one little place, one little feeling insignificant person is sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ in different ways. So in, in thinking about the gravity of all of that, what is the first thought that comes to mind? I would say 50 years ago this year, June 3rd, uh, 50 years ago, Billy Graham had what at the time was the largest gathering of people around 2 million estimated in Seoul, Korea to present the gospel. Um, and now, Doc Brian, you and I have friends who reach that number on a weekly basis. Uh, and so sometimes we can we can see these enormous numbers and we can we can just kind of think about those numbers in association with stats. Um, but I think it's really important that we remember that those numbers are people and that Jesus died for people. And so as we're thinking those things through, um, we we just see that as an incredible opportunity uh, that as we're, the times that we're living in, we take very, very seriously. Uh, the tools and the, and the platforms that we have in the times that we live in, I mean, we're talking about over the course of human history, this is a blip on the radar. Like the last 10 years or so is when this thing has really blown up and gotten huge. And so I, I just um, constantly try to remember that those are human beings on the other side of that screen. And uh, those are people that Jesus died for. Those are people that um, have callings on their lives, that, that God's got a plan for their life. And we want to communicate in ways that, uh, that calls them up into that plan. Yeah. Uh, and you mentioned that you and I have friends that, that reach that amount of time, uh, Josh Broom or or Sean yep. Copeland or Joe Christian guy or uh, many of the others are, are reaching those. And, and and I know that, you know, at a point where I had almost a million followers on TikTok, there was a lot of uh, a lot of negativity that that surrounds all of all of those things. And when you have that many followers, you know, it's it's obviously going to be there. But mm -hmm. how do we encourage digital evangelists? to not let that inf uh, affect their ministry. 
Yeah, I, you know, we have a mutual friend, Joshua Broom, who also gets a lot of negative comments on a daily basis. I've seen uh, screenshots of things that made my blood boil on his behalf. Um, it's, it's. I've seen things on other of our friends' uh, platforms where personal they go they attack family members sometimes spouses it can get really really ugly and so um preparing for this ahead of time is really important uh, because otherwise it can come like an onslaught that if we're not prepared for it it can really it can really hurt and i, I would say a couple things one remembering if you're called to something remembering that and so sometimes that means that we're uh if we're called into a dark place that we're going to have to deal with dark things on occasion and so remembering also that the people who you're speaking to who are giving the negative the negativity who are giving the some that's um Instead of responding, really reframing a bit, instead of responding to a personal attack with being angry or uh, or anything like that, if you you can to reframe that to, hey, this is a person who's very clearly hurting themselves if they're on here trying to attack somebody who's trying to help them. And so an understanding that that's a person that you're that you're still called to serve and and praying for that person. Um, we've we've had an opportunity to do trainings with people across the world into digital missions. Um, and some of those are in countries that are uh, in a Muslim context, which means that when they put things out that are gospel focused, they get uh, very, very attacked. In fact, we've had people who uh, their response to a message was a picture of a group of people who saw the content holding AK-47s, uh, letting them like letting them know that they were going to show up at their house later that day and like real, like credible threats that have taken place. And I'm always so inspired by them because they see themselves as missionaries and know that uh, even though there's negativity, sometimes dangerous negativity when you're talking about other nations um that they they still feel called to it and they're um they do every piece of content that they do bathed in prayer um prepared for what the possibilities could be and and really leaning into the strength and the and the joy of the lord and the peace of the lord in those moments um because they can hurt yeah absolutely i remember uh i was doxxed and you and i had talked about that um, but someone <clears throat> went to every single TikTok video that I had, which was over 250 at that point, uh, with nearly a million followers. And they posted, uh, to quote, uh, beware the storm is coming and then posted my home address, uh, on there. And, and when I tell you that I considered going to a hotel for a couple of weeks, I mean, you don't know who these people are or how they respond, but in, even in ministering to countries where there are people who are boldly against Christianity, um, we still have to remember our calling and what God has called us to do. And I say quite often, none of us experienced what Paul went through or even Jesus went through here on this earth when it comes to persecution. Uh, we may be dealing with it in a different way. But, but so when these things happen uh, at the onset of this, this trouble, what would be your first recommendation to maybe somebody who is new in content creation, who is, who is trying to get the gospel message out? What would your first response be to them in that initial conflict? Yeah, so it, I'll, I'll start with the very beginning. Uh, Dr. Brian, you and I have a, a mutual friend, Marcus Stanley, who's got a great piece of advice, and so I'm going to quote him and give him credit for it. Uh, he says to uh, ponder, pray, post. And so the very first thing, um, you know, he's he's there's a spiritual aspect to that where he's praying about the content that he's posting. And if he feels called to do that, well, that comes with a certain level of authority with it that's not your own authority anymore. And so if I post something that I know God's called me to do, um, when I get negative feedback from that, I, I don't take it nearly as personally if I feel like I was asked by God to do something. Um, that makes it easier for me to, to give those things to him and say, hey, this is, uh, this is a weight that may be bigger than, than me to bear, bigger than I can handle. But you've called me to do this, which means you're going to equip me for it, which means that you're going to come along and, and, and bear the burden for this. Your yoke is easy, your burden's light. And so that in and of itself, knowing that I was called to do something gives me a certain boldness that I just wouldn't have had if it was just my idea. 
And then that ponder piece, like actually think it through, think through your audience, think through um, uh, knowing how people could respond to this. If you're posting something controversial, um, and by the way, what isn't controversial today? Uh, so if you're posting something uh, controversial, no, there's a possibility for this. And and really tr try to reframe that a bit and understand that, hey, this if I get neg something negative, that's somebody who needed to hear this message. And that may be somebody who six months from now, as I look back through my DMs or look back through my comments, they started off hostile and they turned and and uh, and I was able to make an impact in their lives just by being obedient. Then posts, you know, after after you post that in the comments actually do start to come in. One, most of the time, uh, it is 10 to one, sometimes 20 to one where, where it's positive. And it's that negative one that can come in that can really just set us off, that can put us in a tailspin. Um, I would say just consciously keeping things in perspective and understanding like, man, look at all these people who got freedom from something I said. Look at all these people who um, that I, I was able to make an impact on their lives in a positive way immediately. And those that I wasn't, man, I'm going to keep praying because we we see biblical examples of this where somebody who went negative with Jesus all of a sudden uh, after spending some time, after the Holy Spirit has time to work, a turning took place. And so I just consider those people, uh, there's, there's some pre-repentance. You know, they're, 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 it's before the turn has happened, but this was was a step along their journey to uh, to discovering uh, a God who loves them, and and I want to be a part of that journey. And even if it's even if I got to be the the subject of some negativity at that point, if I was called to do it, it's not really me anyway. Mm -hmm. And uh, and me keeping that mindset helps, um, and that's something that I I remind people of on a very very regular basis. Yeah, we have to take in consideration that in any time we're presenting the gospel, that it's no longer I but Christ who lives in me. And that he is the he is the one. Now, inserting a classic Doc Bryan weird psychology fact here to what you said, it takes eight to ten positive comments to negate one negative comment. And so, while we need that encouragement, and I would say that to other Christian uh, creators to make sure that you have a network of other Christian creators and that you're constantly giving them positive feedback about how they are doing and how. Uh, things are, are going. Uh, one of the biggest things that has helped me uh, in ministry and was a great relief to me, you've probably heard this before, was the quote that says, when God called you to the ministry that he had for you to do, he factored in your stupidity. And, <laughs> and, and so we see here that, that God knows us, he called us, he equipped us, and so while it may not be easy, and I don't think there's any aspect of ministry that's just absolutely easy uh, because we're working against the enemy. Uh, mm -hmm. One of our BMA pastors, uh, Brother Alan Brown, uh, said one time, he said, if you don't meet the devil on your road to, of life, you're obviously going the same direction. And we, we don't want to be backing up by any means. Um, so let's talk about a little deeper what about yep. when we are creating content and the overflow of negativity just takes us over? What do we do? So two things here. And, and the negativity can come from so many places, right? Like it, sometimes it's external to us through comments and through direct messages and that sort of thing. And sometimes the negativity can happen up here. Uh, maybe we didn't meet expectations of what we thought was going to take place. Maybe we had a goal for growth and, and we didn't see that happen as quickly as we wanted it to. Um, one of the things I was just in Nashville uh, a couple of weeks ago speaking to creators. And one of the things I said to them was beware of the comparison game. Um, because you guys are on separate journeys with separate callings. And as soon as you start down that road of becoming jealous of somebody else and what God's called them to do, and maybe growth that they're seeing, doors that are opening for them, now all of a sudden you have shifted from this being about something that God's called you to do and the people that you're called to reach. And you've gotten off course and now all of a sudden you're on somebody else's path. And I'll never be as good at being a Doc Brian as Doc Brian is. I'll 
I'll never be as good at being a Joshua Broom as Joshua Broom as because that's not what I'm called to. And by the way, the same thing in reverse the, of somebody else who may see things that I get to work on. You're not going to be me in, in the same way that I'm not going to be you. God's called all of us to these individual things. Um, so there's some overlap in the people that we reach, which is amazing because that means that they're getting to hear different things from different perspectives. And there, you never know what the Holy going to use to spark something in somebody. But those are two things that I would just say can be like death traps for us, not just those 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 from outside coming in, but what happens inside. Um, and if we can be celebrators of others who are in our space, that will turn. And now all of a sudden, uh, when we're going through something, we got a, a group of people around us who've been there before who can speak encouragement to us. And so what to do, I would say a couple of things. Number one, pray. Like, and And that is while that's basic, and I know it is, um, that would be like saying, hey, if I'm an NFL football player, make sure you're showing up on time to practice. Well, that's base necessary for you to be the player, that every bit of the, uh, for you to reach all the potential that you can reach. Well, sometimes when we think about these basic things in Christianity, like getting into the Word so that we know that the words that we're saying line up with what God's Word is, and and praying so that we know that uh, we're, we're returning all these and burdens like God, I'm, I'm I'm giving them to you because I can't handle them. Um, while those are basic things, they are absolutely necessary things. And if you try to do anything outside of that, um, the other stuff I'm about to say won't matter at all uh, if you don't get that basic thing right. The other is, and and, and we do this, Doc Brian. Like we surround ourselves with other people work in this space who have been there before, who can encourage, who can, uh, when a comment's stupid, they can say that was stupid. Uh, you know, forget about that. Let's, let's focus on these five people who, uh, just started following Jesus because of this post or something to that effect. They can really help bring perspective to it. And, um, and being able to walk a road, not alone, I think is the last thing I would say is, uh, learn from things. Sometimes uh, the post that you make that gets the most negative feedback also makes the biggest impact. And so uh, at times we can do something like that and we can we can shrink back and lose our boldness. But if we realize that sometimes those things don't have to be mutually exclusive, sometimes they're the same post that's the same piece of content that gets all the negative feedback also is the one that makes the greatest impact. And so if we if we focus on the negativity in that moment, we'll miss something that is working and uh, and oftentimes start going down a safer path, which will lead to you in all likelihood reaching less people, which is not which is not the goal. The goal is to reach as many people as we possibly can. Right. And, and I'm reminded of that quote, not, <clears throat> I don't remember who said it, but if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you mm -hmm. want to go far, go with people. Uh, yeah. I think one of the things that, that we forget, not just as digital creators, but as ministers of the gospel, is that we were never meant to go alone. I mean, Jesus sent his disciples in pairs. He didn't send one. He sent them in pairs. Uh, and so, you know, when, when we have that community of, and it, may, it doesn't have to be other creators, it doesn't have to be people that are in the same space that we are, but, For sure. but just simply people that we know will go to war with us, uh, people that will, will stand firm with us. Now, uh, leads me into a, a different, different response here. Um, you have three beautiful children, you and your wife do. Of course, your oldest is my favorite. Uh, she's very articulate and a great communicator. Uh, communicator. See there, I, I messed up today, and that's all right. Um, but our friend Josh, and, and I'll have Josh on here in a few weeks, but uh, for those of you who don't know Josh, Joshua Brooms, a former porn star that won multiple awards within the adult industry, was radically saved and found Jesus and is now ministering to millions of people around the world. One of the most common questions that he has been asked or that he has shared with me, uh, which he has three children, uh, three boys, he said, what are you going to do one day when your boys find your old videos on the internet? Um, now, <clears throat> they're quite young, so we don't know how, how things will be changing you know, by that time. But how do we as digital creators withstand, because it's a different kind of attack when they attack our family mm -hmm. or our children. Mm -hmm. How do we respond to that? 
Yeah, it's it's completely different, isn't it? Like, and and the advice that I'm going to give now is very very different than what I would even say for us as individuals, because um, it, it's it's just a very different thing. One, you know, you you want your uh, your family along the journey with you, and so some things to consider is how much of your family do you share online. Um, I think everybody can come to a different place there, but just know that when you're sharing photos and videos of your children and your spouse, that that can happen. Um, and, and that you open yourself up to that. Things live on the internet forever, as we are reminded on a very, very regular basis. Uh, you just gave an example of that, actually. And so, um, and so that is, I'm a big believer in, it's not, it's not my ministry. It's, we've got a team around us, but also my family is, is in on this thing as well. My wife years ago, uh, I was traveling quite a bit and uh, for for ministry purposes, and I was coming home and I was apologizing to her for being gone so much. And finally, one day, uh, she kind of popped back at me and said, hey, stop apologizing. We, you take away our ability to send you and celebrate what God's done when you come home when you've done that. Yeah, and good. we want to come around you and actually celebrate the things that God's doing because it's not just you. Like our family's in this thing too and behind you as well. Well, I think getting that buy-in from the family is really important and do it age appropriately. I got a 13 year old an 11 year old and an eight year old. And so I, I, uh, unpack information differently with my 13 year old than I do with my eight year old. Yeah. But nonetheless, we're open with them. We pray about things as a family. Um, when we're going through stuff as a family age appropriate, but more than most people do, we sit down as a family and we discuss it. We get everybody on the same page and we pray through those things. And so I think the buy-in is really, really important because when you know, this isn't a surprise to them, they know they're a part of this as well. Um, that that creates a very very different dynamic that if all of a sudden um they're brought in on some type of an attack but they've been kind of kept at, at arm's length from your ministry uh at that point it, it can actually come in and create a divide but if they're in it on it with you if they're part of the team now all of a sudden it's something that can press you closer together and you got something to pray about as a family for somebody else yeah absolutely I, i'm a big advocate of you know, you have your social media, you have your TikTok, your Instagram, your Twitter, whatever, your Facebook, but that you have business and then you have personal and that only your personal connections can find your personal pages. I, I mean, I even go as far as I have a Google number and a separate email that is not attached to me in any way so that I have some level of protection there. Um, so in, in looking at um, digital creation. One of the big things that I have, I have learned, uh, from experience is the need to diversify, not put all of your mm. stock into one platform, uh, simply because at, at any moment in time, your account can be banned for a reason or no reason that you would ever know of. And if you have a million followers, then all of a sudden your audience of a million followers is gone. And, and I would compare that a lot to pastoring a church of a thousand people. And then all of a sudden one Sunday morning, everybody's gone and you don't have a church anymore. So how do we as creators make sure that we protect our ministry by diversifying? I love this question. Now we're getting to strategy and that's my world. So this is, uh, this is exciting. I would say a couple things. One, it's really important to know the difference between shared media and owned media. You do not own your Facebook page. You do not own your TikTok channel. You do not own YouTube. You don't own any of those things. Uh, there's, there's, it, and so we, it, it's really important to realize that. And, uh, and so yes, diversification on platforms is important more and more these days, these platforms are teaming up to make decisions. And so we've got some exceptions with that with Twitter or X, um, and then TikTok's kind of its own beast, but, but Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, you know, Google platforms, like they, they team up quite often and make unilateral decisions that can be crushing for people. Um, and the, and the, the, um, I don't, I don't think brand is a bad word. So I'm going to say the brands that they're creating, as long as your brand submitted to God, then a brand is, it can be a good thing. Um, and so through that, uh, understanding that these are tools that can be used, but they are rented tools. They're not own tools and they're tools that can be taken away at any time. And so the importance of building up owned media on top of the shared media, uh, and using shared media to, uh, to fuel and to build owned media is really important. So some examples of owned media would be, uh, an email list. 
uh, Doc Brian, you're creating owned media right now. You're going to you're going to distribute this podcast on different channels. But at the end of the day, you own the audio for this. And so if that needs to go up on a website that ju- that you have and that's the only place for it, that's owned media and 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 you have control over that. So that's a really important thing. So email um, the actual digital assets that you create, not letting all those always live on a phone somewhere, but but storing those things in case all of a sudden you lose all your platform in a day and 200 videos, 250 videos go away in a day where you have those stored somewhere so that you can, uh, so that you can get something else up and going quick. And now you've got this library of content to pull from. Um, those are incredibly important things. Phone numbers are another form of owned media. If you've got, uh, the ability to do, um, texts and that sort of thing and send out mass text, uh, that's a great, that's a great form of, of owned media. And it's, it, more and more and more for believers uh, who are talking about things that are growing more and more controversial. We're saying the same message, but culture saying more and more controversial. Um, the owned media component of things is going to be incredibly important to the future of of any type of faith based creation. So, as as a creator or someone that works with creators, what would you say is the biggest pain point for digital evangelist? Um, the first one I'm going to say is is both a a problem, but I love why it's a problem. Uh, and one of them is just you know you think of influencers and you see uh, maybe your favorite influencer is a, is not a faith based creator. You know I follow a lot of different production channels and stuff like that. And and man, if they've got a million uh, subs on YouTube, they're probably making you know, $500,000 to $800,000 a year if they really understand the the promotional aspect of things and that sort of thing. That's not the case with faith-based creators oftentimes. And it's because uh, they are unwilling, here's the good part, they're unwilling to compromise their message to be attractive to uh, advertisers. And so there's exceptions to that rule, but I'm telling you, I bet, I bet 19 out of 20 are like, this is what we're called to do. This is a mission field for us. And we are not going to compromise on the message of what God's given us just because that means that Starbucks or somebody will partner with us all of a sudden. And so, but, but at the same time that there needs to be, uh, you know, finances are, are, are fuel to fuel the mission. And so that's a pain point. Uh, I look at contracts on a monthly basis from friends who I've got no business agreements with, but they just send me things and say, hey, can you take a look at this and make sure that this is a good deal for us? And so a lot of the times I'll hop on a call and help them negotiate those things. Um, so the the idea of needing some business prowess in this space and uh, and loving that they're not compromising on what they're called to do, but but more faith-based businesses partnering up with faith-based creators to uh, to get their message out there um, through some some influencer advertising. Again, I don't use that word very often, but that's but in the purpose of marketing world, that's a good word to use. Uh, I call them digital evangelists. Um, but that those are those are things that would help this message go further faster. And so that's a big pain point. Another one we've already talked about, that's just dealing with the negativity. That's hard for anybody. We're, we're humans. And, uh, you know, 20 years ago, a negative interaction may have been with one person at a drive through or something to that effect. Um, now, if you're building a big audience, you may have hundreds of negative interactions in a day. Well, we don't have examples in human history of people processing hundreds of negative interactions before. We're in new territory here. And so leaning into people like you who are going to help us uh, navigate through those moments that are brand new in the course of, of human history is incredibly important. We're, we're pioneers, all of us in uncharted territory. And so we're learning in real time what the mental health effects can be through processing what can be hundreds, thousands of negative, negative interactions over the course of, you know, weeks or months, depending on how big your platform is. And so leaning in on experts like yourself, uh, to be able to process those things are incredibly important. And, uh, and so that would be that that would be kind of the two approaches I would say are are probably the two biggest pain points. Um, and then the last one, you know, you we we mentioned it, just the ability to. Uh, you've lost the platform. I have many other friends who've just you know snap fingers, platform's gone one day. They put sometimes hundreds of hours into that platform and it's just poof gone. Um, being prepared for that, holding these things 
with a loose grip so that those are not the most crushing days. Um, it's okay to, to for it to hurt. It's okay for it. To, it's okay for you to press pause and take a break for a period of time. Um, but nonetheless, understanding that just because somebody snapped their fingers and pulled the plug on your platform one day, if you were called to this, you're probably not called to stop. Um, and even though that might look like starting over as it has for many people, um, it, it's, it's, it's worth it to do that because you're called to. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, you talked about, you know, leaning into experts, which I don't see myself as an expert by any means, but, uh, you know, you and, and those that work with you and other creators have, have come to me and said, Hey, look, this is, this is the issue. What is your advice? And I've had to look at those issues and say, I don't even know because we don't know who these people are. You know, we don't, we don't know the intent of, of what they are trying to do. And so what I, my biggest response to that is when somebody's under conviction, they're going to do things to try to hurt you, to hurt your ministry. Uh, and, and, so good. Yeah. and so when we, when we realize again that we're not wrestling against, against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, that this is the enemy attacking us, not the individual. Um, but then there's a little bit of comfort of thinking, uh, as horrible as this may sound, that, that this person is probably somebody living in their mother's basement, you know, eating Cheetos all day and, and, and is a, a keyboard warrior, uh, because there's a lot of that. Um, so in, in protecting our mental health in these areas, I think the very most important thing is that we make sure that our heart and our, our calling is positioned in a way that we know what we're doing is God's plan for our life. Uh, at the end of the day, as a pastor, and I know that you, uh, as pastoring before, uh, would, would understand is that if one person was saved within 50 years of ministry, your ministry was still successful. It's how we how we look at success, how we define success, because that's different for every person. But it's easy to say, hey, man, this was the best content that I ever made, but it only got a thousand views. But this other content, which was absolutely stupid, and I did it to for humor, got millions of views. And it's going to be that way. And, and what I try to remind creators is that that stupid video that got you millions of views People are then going to look at your profile, and they're going to begin to go through and look at other other things that you've done. And if you look at your analytics, you can tell when you have a, a video that really just not necessarily goes viral but has a lot more views than you normally have, uh, you can see where other videos start getting more views. So it can't. We, we have to be very careful to have this mindset of, I'm going to do this video. It's going to be successful. It's going to have X number of views. And then when it flops— and something we just think is silly really, really pops off. We've got to keep in mind that that silly content it actually may draw people to the more serious content. Yeah, and you got to be in this for the long game. If 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 you're expecting some type of success to happen overnight, that does happen. It's one out of a million. Uh, with this, we are in this thing for the marathon, not a sprint. The Bible describes it that way. Uh, just pull that into the digital world. Like consistency matters. Um, understanding that I don't have to have an overnight success matters. It is it, if you're in this thing for the long game, then you're look. You're, it's okay that you've got incremental success. Two steps forward, one step back is still progress. And so it, it's it. We're looking for progress, not perfection. Um, we're looking for uh, to to have a cadence, a rhythm that we can do this for the long haul. We also see people all the time that are like, they start this journey and they pack their plates so full because that's what they think other people are doing and it's not sustainable. And so I think all those things are things that you got to factor into this because all those things matter to the mental health of the individual creating these things. And if you don't factor in the outside, uh, uh, negative comments, if you don't in factor in the inside negative comments, and if you don't factor in the actual cadence of the journey, getting a rhythm down, um, that is something that is sustainable, then all those things are things that the enemy will use to get you off a path and you'll feel like a failure when in reality, you were on your way to seeing some success. You just quit too early. 
Absolutely. You know, w- one analogy that I use a lot in counseling is there, there is that saying, hey, I took a step forward and two or three steps back. Well, if, if you were standing at the edge of a creek and you have to jump across that, that body of water to not get wet, are you going to jump at the edge of the creek or are you going to need to take two or three steps back? And sometimes, really sometimes it's that that two or three steps back that are that gives us the ability to catapult ourselves across the valley or across the divide or across the body of water that stands in our way. So I would encourage anybody not to get discouraged when you feel like you take a step forward and two or three steps back because it may just be what God needs to use in you to catapult you to success. Uh, Lee, thank you for being. Uh, go ahead. Did you have something to add to that? No, I was just going to say sometimes step what looks like a step back is a step forward. Mm. We see that in the Bible where anybody from the outside looking in would say Joseph took a step backward. Uh, the the pit was a step backward. Uh, Potiphar's house was a step backward. Uh, the 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 dungeon uh, was a step backward. And yet God used every single one of those things to move him forward. And so oftentimes, again, from the outside looking in, something can look like a step backward, but God is using it in his unbelievable, creative way, miraculously to turn that, to make it a step forward. And so again, if, if Joseph had given, had given up at any point along that journey, he wouldn't have made it to the platform that God had for him. Um, and so in moments where we feel like we're taking a step backward, realizing, Hey, stop, reassess, see what God's doing. And, and oftentimes miraculously, it actually was a step forward and we just didn't realize it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Lee, thank you for being here with us today on Doc Talks. Uh, if you could just wrap up in a sentence or two what you would encourage digital creators to do in the space of mental health, what would that be? Yeah, I would, I would say a constant assessment. When you have that much feedback coming from an audience, um, it can it can create havoc. And again, we're in uncharted territory. So pause, assess, Pray, surround yourself with an incredible group of friends who can encourage you along the journey and watch what God will do as a result. Absolutely. Where can our where can our listeners find you if they want to find out more information about you and your company? Yeah, so I'm on Instagram as uh, at the Lee Shelton. Uh, our website is compel.studio. We're coming out with a podcast on the story of Joshua Broom um, and his entrance into and exit from the, the porn industry and all the amazing things that God has done since then. Um, and uh, and really the rise of the porn industry and that story of, and how it's uh, taken such a foothold in, in the world that we live in. So that's coming out January 16th, and you can uh, sign up for uh, notifications on that on our website, compel.studio. Great. Uh, well, of course, I'm Doc Brian. You can find me at thedocbryan.com. All of my social media leaks are there on that website. Of course, again, we are at LifeWord Studios today. You can find all of their Christian content at LifeWord.com. 